Hello everyone. I thought I'd do a series on water block design. Now I am not the most knowledgeable person about water block design, but I have certainly enjoyed over the many years learning about water block design and incrementally making them better. So I thought I would share what I have learned with you guys. Now I have posted a number of videos about some of the water blocks that I have made in the past. Uh, I've actually got quite a few that I've posted now. I've actually made a lot more than that, but that's the only ones that I could find uh, pictures for. So after posting those videos, I had a number of questions about the fundamental change from going from a big fat block, like this one here, to a very thin one like this. So this here is four and a half millimeters and this here is roughly 10. So you could say it is twice as thick. Now people said, what is the point? You've got, uh, if, this, if the surface area is the same, what is the difference? You've, you've got much bigger gaps, much deeper channels to make up for the fact that I can't make very narrow ones. So when I, when I was able to make very narrow slots, I made the block much thinner and effectively achieved what you could say is the same surface area. What was the point? So I've oversimplified it here. So this is not the water blocks, but this is you know how we can talk about it. So I've got the thick one up here and the thin one down here. Now, the surface area is exactly the same. It's the same distance from here and here. Now, then two of these. So the surface area is the same. We, I don't worry about the surface area along here because you'd normally have a, a cover along the top. So if the surface area is the same, what is the point of changing? Well, there's two fundamental reasons for changing. One of them being is that this is obviously half the height of this. Now, how is that a benefit? Well, it's a benefit in two reasons. One, because it's half the height, well, that's twice the height of this one here, this one here costs half the cost of copper than this one here. So obviously you've halved the price. Yeah, that's a great thing. But ignoring cost, what difference does it make from a performance point of view? One would say the surface area is the same, so no difference whatsoever. And that would be true if copper was a perfect conductor of heat. Now I know that copper is a fantastic uh, conductor of heat. Well, actually, it's not that great, but it is the most, the best uh, one that we have access to. We can't really make our uh, water blocks out of diamonds, but it's actually not that wonderful. Like I said, yes, it is the best we've got access to, but it also is not a perfect conductor. Because copper is not a perfect conductor, that means there is some resistance to transferring the heat from one place to another. So normally you would have a your heat source, which might be a CPU. Oop, looks like we need some thermal paste in there. Or in our case, we were, we're talking about a much larger TC. Which is some horribly bendy thing like that. <laughs> uh, um, so obviously that is giving off some heat coming out here. Well, wrong color. Coming out here. Now the idea is to take this heat and put it in this stuff here which is supposed to be uh, water. 
right? And then we take that water and we put it in the radiators, and the radiator then transfers it from the water to the air, and then sends the water back to do it all over again. Now, because copper is not a perfect conductor of heat, uh, you get a temperature gradient. So this temperature here might be 50 degrees, which I can't write. And that might mean that, that this is 25. Because copper is also an insulator. Now we have to transfer all of this heat up here and to the surface here. But because this is quite high, the thermal resistance, or it's copper's inability to transfer heat perfectly, creates this gradient across the copper. Now I'm obviously making up these numbers. Now if we have a much shorter block, if this is 50, this height here may only be, I don't know, 40, uh, 40 degrees. Hotter being better, because there's less resistance between this and this. And 40 might be something like here. Now the other benefit is that it allows us to have a much thinner base. This base being half the thickness of that. That is because the majority of the cooling or your surface area is actually here and here. So you need to take all your heat and transfer, take it from here and transfer it up here. Like that. Now obviously if you have a very big large gap here, this distance needs to be greater because it has to transfer the heat longer along this plane before it can push it up. So this here, on a thinner block, well, with thinner fins, can be thinner. And therefore, you can reduce costs, but whatever, but then the, dis the thermal loss between this and this is less because this distance is half as much as this. So this one here is twice as thick as this block down here. So you are tw twice as bad off. That's some really crazy bad English. <laughs> uh, this will be uh, much better or have half the thermal resistance of this block purely based on this is twice as thick as the, this well at least the thermal resistance of this part of it will obviously be half as much of that because it is half as thick so the benefits of going to a thinner block with more and smaller slots even if the surface area is the same is A the cost will be half as much and B, you will have a performance improvement because of the conduction losses or the insulation of copper. So hopefully my Photoshop scribblings was of help to someone. Um, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye bye.